us uh, once again, uh, Bishop uh, Greg Gill and Diana uh, be here with us. They are no longer really guest speakers because they were here before. Uh, you've met them. So the first time they're guests, second time they're already family, right? So anyway, we're, we're just blessed that they, out of their busy schedule, they were able to come and be a part of uh, us here and worship with us. And so um, he preached this morning in our uh, uh, Brampton church. And so I'm glad he still was available for us to receive today. Um, for those of you that don't know uh, Bishop Greg, um, uh, Bishop Greg and, uh, and Diana are the presiding bishops of the Ignite at the Nation, Ignite the Nations International, a five-fold ministry network um, uh, based in uh, Alberta. Calgary, Alberta, and also they are the executive director of the Ever Increasing Ministries. What a nice ministry name. Always increasing, never decreasing. Amen. All right, so uh, they, they travel uh, to equip, train, uh, preach the word of God, and of course, uh, continue to build up the body of Christ. And so we're blessed that they can come here today and also... Uh, Build us up and encourage us, strengthen us. So let's give a very warm Champion Life welcome to Bishop Greg. And by the way, he's a great musician and worship leader. So he, he's going to do his own worship later on. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Jerry, so much. Great to be with you today. Hello, champions. Come on, be on your game here. Glory be to God. I'm going to go to the piano right now, actually, before I even start. And uh, are you okay to worship a couple more songs? Okay. I know, I know listen, Filipinos are the best worship, worship people in the world. they got the best musicians. You hog all the good musicians. <laughs> and uh, it's, amazing, it's amazing how talented they are. And so we're going to worship. I'm just going to go to the piano here, do a quick changeover, so give me a moment. Sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. to your name. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name, for your 
your name is great and greatly to be praised. Sing, I give glory to your name. I give glory to your name. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. I give glory to your name. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the Aramasata Karamana Nama, in the Aramasata Gadea. Oh, go ahead and worship him today. We worship you, Jesus. In the Aramana Dere Aramasata Gadea. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, holy and anointed one, you're the holy and anointed one, Jesus. 
Jesus. So we thank you, Jesus, that we can come and worship you today. We thank you that your name is higher than every other name. <laughs> we thank you that one day every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, according to God the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we lift high your name in this house. We lift high your name in Champion Life Center. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead and lift them high for 30 seconds. Just give him your praise. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. <coughs> we love you, Jesus. There's something about your name, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something about your name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Come on, you need healing today? Just receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing into your body right now in the name of Jesus. You need deliverance today? Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. He's here to set you free. He's here to heal you. He's here to minister to your heart. Jesus, yeah. Your name is Jesus. Something about your name. Something about your name. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, when I when I was growing up, I'd, I'd often... Uh, I know everybody's got a different feeling on him, but I'd watch many uh, crusades with Benny Hinn. I'd watch it. And he'd, he'd come to my city, and, and I'd go to him. And people may disagree with his way he does it, but, but I'll tell you one thing I always knew was whenever I went into a service, the presence of God was always there. I've, I've never seen anyone usher in the presence of God and just let it happen. And it doesn't matter what it looks like or how it may come. The main thing is, is that you're a pursuer of the presence of God. Moses said, I, I will not go anywhere unless I have your presence. And champions, when you come together week after week, please be people of the presence. I know your leaders are people that love the presence of God, and that's why it's easy for me to come in here and minister and just flow and do whatever I have I need to do and and as we as we were worshiping there I just felt someone someone you had pain in the back the right side of your neck and that Jesus wanted to heal you so if that's you just lift your hands right now wherever you are and just receive thank you just lift your hands right there sister just lift both your hands because Jesus is here to heal you he cares enough to stop this meeting that he had that word of knowledge for you so I just speak the healing power of Jesus Christ into your body, that that pain in your neck would be gone, every bit of discomfort would leave in the name of Jesus, and that you would be made whole in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> thank you, Lord. So you just need to thank him in advance for your healing. Thank him. Even test it out right now. Try to do something you couldn't do. It just just touch it or or bend it a little bit. Try to do something you couldn't do and just and just receive your healing. How's it feeling right now? Good? Just giving me two thumbs up right there, Pastor. Come on, just thank God for his healing power. See, all you have to do is all you have to do is pursue his presence. We just need to be lovers of his presence. <laughs> lovers of him because it's Jesus that died for our sin. We just talked talked about communion and talked about the power of his blood, and his blood heals today still. You know, there's still some churches. Apostle Jerry, that they don't like talking about the blood because it's too gross, they say. 
But I'll tell you, we know it was the blood that shed, uh, was shed for us that heals us, that sets us free, that delivers us. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to get off this piano, but I feel the glory of God, Pastor, right now. I hope that's okay. Because I'll tell you, when God's people gather and they're hungry, can you just lift your hands all across this place? I'm dangerous when you put me on a piano, Pastor. And uh, I'll tell you, just lift up your hands and just receive his presence right now. Just say, flood me with your presence right now, Holy Spirit. This was not planned. I was not planning to go on the piano. But thank God something's happening that was not in the bulletin in Jesus' name. Because he wants to come and he wants to flood you with his presence. And he wants to just fill you today with his Holy Spirit fresh. He wants to fill you fresh. Just say, Lord, come and fill me fresh with your Holy Spirit right now. Come on, just begin to sing from your spirit today. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Worship him today. Holy Spirit, flood this place. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts right now. Come, oh, come, oh, come. Fill our hearts right now. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Lord your presence Lord your presence become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Yes, Lord, your presence, Lord. I could sing of your love forever, and I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Come on, sing it. Over the mountains and the hills, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. And I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love 
forever. Sing it one more time. Over the mountains. Over the mountains and the hills. Your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. And I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. And I could sing of your love forever. And I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Come on, if you love them, give them a hand of praise today in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice to him. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Bible says if we don't praise him, the rocks are going to cry out. So we, so we might as well praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. That was dangerous, Pastor Jerry, right there stay there for a long time and uh, do you want me to use this other mic whatever you're using good sound out of it anyways okay all right well great to be with you like I said I have my wife uh, Lady Diana I call her she's with me today and great to be back with you here in Scarborough I think, I think this is our third time, our second time meeting here, but last time we met during the pandemic, we met over in Brampton in the afternoon, and so uh, it's our third time ministering with you, and it's always a joy to be here with you. We love, we love, uh, how many, how many love your leaders, Apostle Jerry and Mama E? <coughs> Come on. They've been, uh, we've built a relationship with them over the last six years. They've been uh, very influential in our life. I tell people all over the world that Pastor Jerry is one of my heroes. And uh, he laughs at me, but that's true. And, and he's, he's influenced my life. We haven't spent a lot of time together, but he's influenced me from afar. And how many know that when you're influenced by a man of God, then there needs to be honor. And so we're so thankful. Thank you for your investment in our lives. Thank you for believing in us. And uh, we're just overjoyed to be with you today. I want to get right in the Word of God. And... Uh, we're just going to hopefully just minister the word to you today. I really felt, uh, if it's okay, Apostle, to go off my notes and go with something else. I think Holy Ghost messed me up there. So I'm, I'm preaching no notes. I'm just going with what's in my spirit today. Okay? I had a nice power presentation, PowerPoint presentation. It was beautiful. I, I mean, I... I got it done by my friend in the Philippines, and, and uh, it was beautiful. But I want you to turn to Luke chapter 10, if you would, please. Luke chapter 10. Um, see, I don't, I don't get in very many atmospheres where I can just flow like that. So thank you for your freedom to do that. Luke chapter 10, verse number 38. We're just going to look at one verse today. Because I believe Holy Spirit wants to do some very powerful things in this house. How many know that when God's people gather together, the things begin to happen? You know, it says, do not forsake the, the assembling or coming together. And one of the things that's been missing during this pandemic over the last couple of years is many people have not been able to come together. Uh, maybe some still can't come together, so thank God that we can be online. But there's something that happens when we can be together. And, and, uh, you don't understand this, Apostle Jerry, like when you're ministering in churches now and, and like some of these places don't want to have altar calls and you're used to laying hands on people. And, and there, there's something that happens when there's a physical impartation of the laying on of hands. And so today I'm, I'm going to open up this altar when I'm done and I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm not afraid of no pandemic. I'm sorry. I, I believe we got to be cautious, but I believe that greater is Jesus in us than Satan will ever be. Come on. 
Amen? And so there's something that happens when we receive an impartation. So look what it says in Luke 10, 38. It's talking about Jesus, and it, and it says... Uh, Let's, uh, Luke 10, 21. Then Jesus was what? Filled with the joy of what? Of the Holy Spirit. How many know it's time to get filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit again? There have been so many people that have been depressed, oppressed, possessed, whatever you want to say, but they've lost their joy because of things that have happened over the last couple of years. And it says that Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And there's something that happens because as we look at that, we, we know what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. The book of Romans tells us this, that the kingdom of God is made up of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. How many know we need joy? See, some people, some people you've been walking around with a limp, but God wants to give you back a leap. He wants to give you your joy back. How many, how many know that the Word of God says that your joy may be what? Empty? No, that your joy may be complete, that your joy may be full, that your joy may be overflowing. And so there has to be out of us an overflow of joy. I don't know about you, but I don't like being around, Pastor Jerry, people that look like they've been baptized in pickle juice. I like being around people that look like they have the joy of the Lord. They're fun people. It's okay to have fun in the kingdom of God. Some people get so intense and they get so focused. I'm just like, chill, buddy. You need to just chill out. It's okay to have fun. Like, be a real person. One thing about my wife and I, I mean, we're real as can be. I mean, there's sometimes, I, I repent, Apostle, but there's sometimes I just don't want to talk about God. I want to just talk about life. Because... To talk about life is to let God do his work. And when we come together, we need to come together with the joy of the Lord. Because sometimes somebody you're meeting with may need the very exact word that you have for them at that moment. And that word can come and set them free by the power of God. Uh, turn over to Hebrews chapter 1 if you would. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse number uh, 9, I believe it is. Here we go. Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1, 9. Listen to what it says. It says, verse 9, You love what is right and hate what is wrong. Therefore, God, your God, has what? Set you above, or anointed you, it says in New Living Translation, pouring out what? The oil of joy upon you more than anyone else. Woo! Hallelujah! The oil of joy is upon you more than anyone else. That means you just need to go around and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm full of the joy of the Lord. I thank you that I'm baptized in the joy of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord that I am full and overflowing of what you have for me. Because I need to be filled with Holy Spirit every day. The great theologian C.H. Spurgeon was once asked, why do we need to be filled with Holy Spirit every day? And he simply said, because we leak. Because there's spots in us that, that it's like we have empty spots. We have places that need to be filled. And so every day when we come before Holy Spirit, we say, Holy Spirit, we cry out to you today, and we ask you, would you fill us? Not with just yourself, but would you fill us with your joy? We used to sing a song growing up. I've, I've grown up in Pentecost all my life. We used to sing a song. There is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of. And they'd stand up, and the half has never yet been told. But you look around, and everybody looks miserable They're singing that song. 
How can you have the joy of the Lord when you look miserable? Now, I'm not telling you that every day is going to be a joyful day. Because there are some tough things that you face. When life hits reality and sometimes things don't go the way you thought they are going to go, how many know it's hard to find joy sometimes? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, number 18, or uh, verse 16, says this. It says, always be joyful. Well, what happens, God, if I don't want to be joyful today? What happens if I just want to have a miserable day? But the scripture says always be joyful. I didn't write that. Listen, if I wrote it, you can guarantee that wouldn't be in there, Apostle Jerry. But, but God said always be joyful, the Apostle Paul writes. Then it's like, so another translation that says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And so sometimes it's hard to have joy in the midst of a tough season. But that's where you got to dig deep down and rely on what's inside of you. Come on, somebody, in Jesus' name. you got to rely that the joy of the Lord is your strength, and that deep down you can rely on everything that he has put inside of you to come forth in power in Jesus' name. I need the joy of the Lord. There's so many days I feel so many attacks from people or different circumstances, and I'm like, God, where is the joy of the Lord in this? Because it would be easier to walk away from it all, wouldn't it? Come on. When you're going through a tough times, how many know it's easier to just walk away than deal with it? But you have to go through things so that you can go to where God needs you to get. He uses tough times to build strength inside of you so that his joy can be made manifest through you. Now it's interesting because you all know the verse that says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, what does that mean? Well, thank you for asking. It means this. It means that when you make God happy, his strength goes into you. How many know it's, it's, it's God's good pleasure for us to please him on the earth? And so everything we do, as we please God, the joy and strength of God goes into our life so that we can be more effective. There's people that you meet with, and, and how many know they're so miserable, it's like you, you want to get out of there real quick. But there's something inside of you that knows if you can just hold on a little longer, you can be a blessing to them. And I don't know who you're facing. I don't know what you're going through right now. But I know this, is that you need to know that his joy is enough. We sang songs when I was growing up, Apostle. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. Singing and shouting, since Jesus made me whole. Folks don't understand it, nor can I keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling day and night. And we sing all these songs. And people be standing there. Like that. Bubbling, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And you look at them and you say, there's no strength in that man. But somehow we got to have the joy of the Lord. I love to be around people that make me laugh. We have, we have one friend. He used to be a pastor. He's not a pastor anymore. He's a business guy, and he's marketplace minister now. So he, he is in ministry still. But he, he got so fed up with ministry, and he went into marketplace ministry. And I get around him, and we don't talk about church. We don't talk about anything, and he just makes me laugh for hours. And we said, is that true, Doc? And, he, and, and I just don't fall off the chair in the restaurant every time we're together because he makes me laugh so much. Like, Pastor Jerry, he's a big guy like me. And so him and I both fly, fly as part of our life. And so we're fat guys on a plane. And we have stories like nobody else can understand. So we're always talking, the last time we were together, I'm going to go out here and be honest with you. Last time we were together, we're talking about how does a fat guy go to the plane, go to the bathroom on a plane when they're so small? And, and I'll just let your mind run wild with that. But, but anyways, we're, we're talking about these, and he, he's the only guy that can understand me. And we're like, we're high-fiving each other, and we're like, yeah! 
they might not think of us, but we make it happen. And, and all these things. And, and it's like people, God sends people in your life to bring joy to your life. And sometimes when you're going through tough times, you need to get around people that aren't even just in your own inner circle and let them speak into you. You know, I, I recall the Bible says that Jesus was a friend of sinners. But many of us don't have many sinner friends. So how can we win the loss if we're not with sinners? I thought we're trying to win lost people, aren't we? So if we're hanging around with believers, listen, I'm a minister, I hang out, most of my friends are believers, but I have unbelieving friends that are, are uh, pre-Christ followers, if you want to use that word, um, that are not fully come to Christ yet, but I'm believing, so I have to hang around them so that they're going to know the God I serve. We say, oh, well, I just want to be around believers, well... You're not gonna. You're not gonna grow that way. Listen, how many know the people that don't believe that come into the church and get saved are the ones that keep you on your toes the most? And you know what? They bring freshness. They bring growth. They bring excitement. They could say anything, and and you don't you don't care. It's just like we tell people, come to Jesus. He'll take everything, and then they come, and we try to make them perfect. It's not our job. It's Holy Spirit's job. And so when they see joy in us. They'll turn to what we have. Come on. And I, I want people to see the joy of the Lord in me. I want people to be around me because, not just because I'm spiritual, but because I want to have fun. And girls, they want to have fun. <laughs> Random, but mommy, you was a good one, right? And so, so, listen, you have to be a person that wants to have fun. I love, I love being around these guys. I love tracking these guys when they're on their cruise and they're on their holidays and they're snapping selfies. I mean, these guys are a selfie, selfie king and queen right here, right? And, and it's like Mommy E's like in the hot tub and taking pictures. Of I'm like, wow, they're having fun. And we got to make sure that our circumstance or our age does not define who we are. Because who we are in the kingdom of God is we're a son and daughter of God. We're a son of the Most High God. We're a daughter of the Most High God. And if you want to have fun, hang around your dad and mom. Because families hopefully can have fun together. I don't see, I'll see, I'm, I'm watching these guys when they're pulling the network together and, and they're, not, they're not just having five hour services or something. They're they're sitting there eating for five hours. They're playing games. They're doing, doing all these fun things. They're just in my city this week, Calgary. Pastor Jesse brings his love, by the way. I just saw him on Wednesday night. And uh, I'll be with them speaking in Calgary Calgary uh, campus in October. And uh, Pastor Jesse loves to have fun. When I'm around him, Pastor Jerry, I just laugh and laugh. He's like, Bishop Greg! And I'm laughing, I'm laughing. He just loves to smile. He loves to laugh. And no matter how hard he may be getting beat down, he can laugh. Him and Arlene are troopers. They're beautiful people. Because they even, I've been with them through some tough times of walking with them. I've been there and listening to them. But somehow, some way, he's laughing. I'm like, Pastor Jesse, you're incredible. I can't laugh at that stuff. But he loves to have fun. And you know what? Jesus loves to have fun. And Holy Spirit loves to have fun. He loves to give you his joy. He loves to pour out his joy upon you. And so many people go out. So Acts 10.38 says this, that Jesus went about doing good. What was he doing? Healing all those who were oppressed from the devil. And he knew that God was with him. And it says, Jesus, even before he went out, he knew that he was anointed by God. Somebody shout, I'm anointed. To be anointed doesn't mean like some super spiritual thing where it's do 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 the anointing. Uh, and, then, and then people start talking and preaching, well, the anointing uh, will set uh, you free. Uh. That's not the anointing. That's foolishness. 
The anointing is God empowering you for success, to, to, for you to be a success in every area of influence of your life. It's very simple. We may be anointing this, this, uh, this mystical thing. That's the word I was looking for, mystical. And it's not, because I remember pre- preachers when they'd be growing up, all you need is an anointing, all you need is an anointing. I, I preach it myself, but I know what my anointing is, and I just step into it and flow. One of the things is, is don't, don't try to be someone you're not. You know, when David was going out and fighting Saul, and he tried on Saul's armor and it didn't fit, and he realized, I can't wear Saul's armor because God's made me a shepherd boy. And so he took five stones, and he took down the giant. What did he do? He used all he had. And I'm telling you, if you want Holy Spirit joy to flow through you, just be who you are and use what you've got. Glory be to God. I've never preached this before, but it's sounding good. Glory, I hope it's recorded. I need to develop this message. But listen, Holy Spirit wants to use you. And he wants to breathe fresh life into you so that you can breathe fresh life into others. Because there's a lot of people that get dry. There's a lot of people that get empty. I love what it says, Matthew 5, 6, it says, those who are hungry and thirsty, they shall be filled. Those who are hungry and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. And today I'm telling you, Holy Spirit wants to come and he wants to fill you till you're overflowing. He wants to fill you not only today, but every day so that you can allow Holy Spirit joy to flow through you and so that you can be like Jesus, going about doing good. Doesn't it feel good when you can help somebody? How many people, how many thousands of people were you able to help because of this pandemic that you probably wouldn't have helped if it didn't happen? Powerful. Because you took on the hands and feet of Jesus and helped people. Jesus was anointed... And he went about doing good, healing all those who were sick and oppressed of the devil. And he knew that God was with him. Now, you just said you're anointed. Say, I'm anointed. Now, if you're anointed, then how many know that that word? Jesus Christ. The word Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. The anointed one and his anointing. So... If you're representing Jesus Christ on this earth, then you're rep- representing Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing who lives inside of you. See, in the Old Testament, the anointing used to come upon the prophets. The New Testament, 1 John 2.20, 1 John 2.27 says, The anointing you have abides and resides inside of you. You need no man teach you because the Holy Spirit will teach you in all things. And so, you don't need more anointing today. You just need to be filled with Holy Spirit. All the anointing you need is already inside of you. You just need to learn how to release it. Well, how do I do that? Just get a, get in situations where God can use you. You say, well, I don't have a ministry. I went to Pastor Jerry, Pastor LV, and, and I told them I want to be using this, and they don't know if I can be used. Listen, www.getoverit.com. But if you feel your anointed in some area, come to your leaders and say, this is what I feel, and I'm sure they'll guide you through, and if they see it, they'll recognize it on your life, then you'll be released into it. But it's important that the anointing on your life is recognized by others. See, some people think they're anointed, and there's like not one drop on them, or in them. But the callings of God are without repentance, but, but God teaches us through his word that the callings are recognized by leaders, by fivefold ministry leaders. They recognize callings of God in our life. And that's why you say, well, I don't have a ministry. I don't know what to do. Well, find somebody that's in a little worse spot than you are and just start loving them. And you'll have a ministry. Oh, it may not be in lights, but I'll tell you, it will be recognized. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. He will fill you with the joy 
the Holy Spirit. Because he loves to fill his kids every day with his touch. Luke 11, and I close with this. We start with Luke 10. Luke 11 goes over to this. It says, the end of the chapter, it says, how much more if the father loves his children, gives good gifts to his children, then how much more does the Holy Spirit have for those who ask for it? How much more? Much more. How much more? I can't hear you. How much more? Do you believe that today? Then if you believe he's got much more, then he has much more for you. There's much more to put in store. He wants to fill you till you're overflowing so the joy of the Lord can bubble out of you and so that you can be happy again. See, some people just need a good dose of the joy of the Lord. It's like they've lost their happiness, they've lost their joy, they've lost everything that meant something to them. You say, well, I've had a loss in my life. I've had had lots of things happen in my life. God's here to restore you today. He says it's not too late. You can still have your joy back. You can still receive my touch today. In Jesus' name. And if you'll just say, I'm willing, and I'm hungry for you. Those who are hungry and thirsty, they shall be filled. Now, when when I'm thirsty like I am right now, could you hand me some water, please, babe? Thank you. You're not my babe, but you can hand me some water. (laughs) Thirsty. So I take a drink. That's what Holy Spirit wants to do for you today. If you're thirsty, he wants you to take another drink. He wants you to say, fill me, Holy Spirit. I remember, Pastor Jerry, I was in a, I was in IHOP in Kansas City, not Pancake House, but the International House of Prayer. And I was there, and I was there for six days, and I, I was going through a very tough time in my life. And they were doing a worship set, intercession set the worship team singing up on the stage. I'm sitting on chairs just like this, about four rows back, right in the middle where that girl in the white is. And they're worshiping, and then after the song that they sing, this girl starts to sing a spontaneous song about the joy of the Lord. Now, I'm there because I just really need healing, and I just need to get poured into. And I'm worshiping. And we're about 45 minutes into the set. And suddenly, I'm standing there. you got to understand, I was 200 pounds more than I am right now. So I'm not little now, but I was certainly was not little then. I don't know that I've ever been little. But anyways, I'm standing there worshiping God. And suddenly, I just fall out on the chairs beside me. And I take six of these chairs out. It's like a whole row. Nobody near me. I take a whole row out, and I'm just like, I'm falling out, and I'm splattered all over the chairs. And as I'm there on the chairs, suddenly I begin to laugh. And you got to understand, I was in a really tough spot there. I was going for healing, and I I was just believing God was going to touch me. And I began to laugh. And for 45 minutes, Apostle, I sat there, laced out on those chairs and I laughed and God began to heal my heart and I was reminded of the scripture in Proverbs that says a merry heart does good like a medicine listen some of you are taking medicines I got a medicine for you today it's the joy of the Lord he'll come and give you the medicine you need you need to get baptized in the joy of the Holy Ghost and, and God began to heal my heart and it's like take my heart and make it you know and and just began to heal my heart, and it was a result because the joy of the Lord came in my heart. And where I was hurting, and I needed healing, he said, today, I'm going to fill you with Holy Ghost joy. And it ministered to me, and it changed my life forever. I'll never forget the moment. And I'm telling you that God has a moment for you. You hear all this encountering words and all these things. But I'll tell you, God wants to come and transform you by the power of his spirit as only he can do. I can't make you serve him. I can't make you receive Holy Spirit. 
But I'll tell you, if you do, you're going to be changed forever in your life. And the joy of the Lord can be your strength, and he can fill you with the Holy Ghost and power that your joy may be full. In Jesus' name, I hope that made sense, anything that I said. Let's stand together. If we could worship team, would you come? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, just lift your hands. If you have a if you have a prayer language, if you pray in the Holy Spirit, would you lift it to the Lord right now? <clears throat> Come on, don't be don't be Catholic on me today. I want you to be Holy Ghost Pentecostals today. Lift your voice, just pray. There's a lot of good Holy Ghost Catholics too today in Jesus' name. Can we do Holy Spirit? You are welcome here. Can we do that one? And just lift your voice today in Jesus' name. And just ask him to come and give you a fresh filling. Ask you to come and give him a fresh baptism. In Jesus' mighty name. A fresh baptism of fire. Fresh baptism of his joy. That your joy may be made full today. That you would experience Holy Spirit joy. If you're in this place today. And you're saying, I need fresh baptism of the joy of Holy Spirit. I want to be freshly filled today. Come all, come out of your seat all over this place. Come to this altar right now in Jesus' name. Just step out. You're saying, I need a baptism. I need a fresh baptism. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on, all, all over this place. You're saying, I want a fresh filling. I want to be baptized fresh by the Holy Spirit and with power today in Jesus' name. Come on, all over this place. He's here right now. He's already touching you. Come as close as you can so people can come all over this place. There's nothing worth more. Come on, come close as you can, please. Just come right up to the front so others can get in behind. Come on. Come on, Holy Spirit's here. Come on, look at this. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Diana, come and lay hands on people. Come on. Come on, just keep coming today. Keep coming. You're saying, I need a fresh baptism. I need a fresh baptism. I need a fresh baptism. I want you to baptize me fresh. Baptize me with your love. Baptize me with your fire. Baptize me with your joy. Receive. 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 Receive right now. Fill 
Fresh filling. Fresh filling today. Fresh filling. Just receive everything he has today. Receive in Jesus' name. Yeah. Receive. Touch them right now. Touch your people today. To be overcome. Lift your hands and receive. Lift your hands all over this house. Lift your hands. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me fresh. Fill me with your joy. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your goodness. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh baptism. Everybody look at me for one moment. See what happens if you're gonna if you're gonna catch it. Some things are caught, not just taught. So what you need to do, come here, boss, if you would. You need to get up around someone that's a little further ahead than you. And you just need to rub off on them. 
and what's on them needs to get on you. It's called impartation. It's called catching that which is on them. We see all throughout the scriptures there was impartation. Through the laying on of hands, there was impartation by the Holy Spirit power. So listen, when you can get around Mother E and Apostle Jerry, you need to get around them and rub up against them and catch everything you can. Catch every bit of anointing. I know you're already anointed, but catch more from them. Because God uses them as leaders, and sometimes leaders see things on the top of the mountain that we don't see. They can identify things in our life, whether it be giftings or whether it be challenges. And they're there to walk with you and walk alongside of you, not to, not to come against you. See, so many people think in this father-son message that it's like, oh, well, they're trying to control me. No, they're not trying to control you. They're trying to patrol you. Did you catch that? It's not about control. It's about patrol. And God sends people into your life to walk alongside of you that will help you. Oh, by the way, in the New Testament, he says he will send his Holy Spirit and he will be a help me to you. And he'll come alongside and encourage and comfort you. So rely on Holy Spirit. You know, uh, I've heard it taught many, many times in Apostle that the woman in the relationship is like the Holy Spirit. They can comfort and they can <laughs> And They come alongside and encourage and do all those other things. But we need to learn to listen to each other. Because we need each other. Turn to the neighbor next to you and say, I need you. See, if you realize that you need them, then you're going to grow. I'd like us to all lift our hands right now in closing. And I'd like us to sing this, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I know he's already here, but we're saying, would you come and flood our hearts again? Let's sing it together. Worship team, lead us. Holy Spirit, come on, lift your voice, lift your hands. Pass and take it. the joy. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So when we go from this place, the Holy Spirit doesn't get left behind here. He goes with you. So wherever you go, the Holy Spirit is with you. And therefore, whatever situation that you're in, you bring the presence of God. You carry the glory of God. In whatever situation, you can enter into that situation and bring the presence of God. Because you have the presence of God. Amen? And so let's dismiss with the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you His peace. May it cause you to walk under an open heaven. May it cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May it open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May it continue to fill you with His love, grace, and the power of His Spirit throughout this week and until He comes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week.
of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Hallelujah. All right, by the way, uh, as you go out outside, um, there are books that they have written that you, there's hope in the morning and I will not pursuing the path of perseverance, all right? So there's books there and uh, you can just go make sure that, that you uh, uh, purchase one of those books that will help you in your journey with the, with the Lord and their ministry, okay? God bless you.